Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. In this lesson, what we're going to do is continue working with the greatest common factor. But in this case, we're going to try to find the greatest common factor between three numbers. Now, if you recall from the last section, we were given two numbers, and to find the greatest common factor between those two, we list the factors out, and then we look for the largest one that's common. Well, you see, it doesn't matter if you're given two numbers, or three numbers, or four numbers, or whatever. You can do the same process for as many numbers as you have. So what we're going to do here is apply it to three numbers to give you an idea of how to do that. So if you wanted to find the greatest common factor between the number 6, 24, and 18, then here is how you would do it. The first thing you'd do is you would write down your first number, which in this case is number 6, and you would write down the factors. So, number 1 is always a factor because it can divide evenly into 6. Number 2 is a factor because 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, number 3 is a factor because 3 times 2 is 6. 4 and 5, neither one of those are factors because they cannot be divided evenly into number 6. But the number itself, of course, is always a factor. So we can list that out. Then we look at our middle number. So here's the number 24. And we list all the factors. Now it can get a little tricky, so we need to just make sure and do it step by step. The number 1 is a factor because it can divide in. The number 2 is a factor because 2 times 12 is 24. The number 3 is a factor because 3 times 8 is 24. The number 4 is a factor because 4 times 6 is 24. The number 5 is not a factor, but the number 6 is a factor because 6 times 4 is 24. Uh, the number 7 is not a factor because it cannot go in. But the number 8 is a factor because 8 times 3 is 24. You go 9, 10, and 11. None of those are factors because they cannot be divided in. But the number 12 is a factor because 12 times 2 is 24. And if you keep marching up 13, 14, 15, you'll find that none of those can divide in, so they're not factors. So the last one on all these lists is always the number itself. Notice the last number is always the number itself. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24, those are all the factors of this number. Now let's look at the number 18. Okay, so the number 1 is a factor. The number 2 is a factor because 2 times 9 is 18. The number 3 is a factor because 3 times 6 is 18. 4 and 5 are not factors because they don't go in evenly. But the number 6 is a factor because 6 times 3 is 18. 7 and 8 you can skip because they don't go in. But number 9 is a factor because 9 times 2 is 18. And then you just keep going on and on, and the last guy that you find is the number 18, the number itself. So all we've done is write all the factors of all the numbers, and we can see right away that the number 1 is a common factor, okay? The number 2 is a common factor, the number 3 is a common factor, but the greatest common factor is actually the number 6 because that is the largest factor that's common to all three of these lists. So you see, it doesn't matter if you're finding the greatest common factor between two numbers, or if you're finding the greatest common factor between three or four or five numbers, the procedure is the same. So you're just finding all the factors of each number, which you get a little practice with, as you do these with, with me, and then you just circle the one that is the largest one that's common. Okay, the largest one that's common. So let's do another one here. Let's say we're going to find the greatest common factor between the numbers 32, 8, and 40. And of course, the larger the numbers that you have, the more factors you're going to have because the more things can be multiplied together to give you that number. So let's switch colors here a little bit and say, all right, the number 32. Let's list the factors of the number 32. Well, the number 1 is always a factor. The number 2 is a factor because 2 times 16 is actually 32. You can also tell that this is divisible by 2 because it ends in a 2. All right, the number 3 is not a factor. It does not divide in. But the number 4 is a factor because 4 times 8 is 32. 5, 6, and 7 are not factors because they don't divide in evenly. But the number 8 is a factor because 8 times 4 is 32. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. If you go through all of those, none of those guys work. But the number 16 is a factor because 16 times 2 is a uh, divides in evenly or multiplies together to give you 32. And then if you just keep on marching, the only other guy you're going to find is the number itself, which is 32. So that takes care of this. Now, the second number is the number 8. Let's see if we can go a little more rapidly. 1 divides into 8. 2 divides into 8. 3 doesn't, 
but four does divide into eight, five doesn't, six doesn't, seven doesn't, eight does divide into eight. So those are all factors. And then finally, the number 40, uh, the number one divides in, the number two divides in, number three does not, but the number four does divide in because four times 10 is 40. The number five does because eight times five is 40. The number six and seven do not, but the number eight does because eight times five is 40, as we just said. Uh, number nine, of course, doesn't divide into here, but number 10 does because 10 times four is 40. And you keep on marching through, uh, through the teens and, and really nothing jumps out at you until you get to the number 20 because 20 times two is 40. And then you keep on marching to, through the 20s and the only other place you're gonna end up with a factor is the number 40. So you just have to kind of take your time with it. Now let's look for the common factors. Number one is common, number two is common, number four is common, but the largest one looks like the number eight. That's the one that's common to all three, number eight. So what we say is the eight is the greatest common factor. And up in our previous problem, the number six is the greatest common factor. So you see, the process is really the same in both of these cases. You list the factors for each number, and then you just look for the largest one that's common. The only thing that can trip you up and you might need practice with is getting practice listing the factors and not missing a number. The um, only advice I can give you is just to practice it. You need to be able to sit down and go through them and, and, and march through with each of the numbers and see, you know, does it divide in or not? And, and that'll tell you if it's a factor. Uh, and you can see it all boils down to knowing your multiplication tables really well. You need to know that eight times four is 32. You need to know that, you know, seven times seven is 49 or, or whatever. You need to know that stuff so that when you're finding your factors, it's very, very, very fast. So make sure that stuff's on the tip of your tongue. Make sure you understand this concept. And then follow me on to the next lesson where we will continue working with fractions, building your skills, building your confidence, and helping you to excel in your math classes.